Ladies and gentlemen, how do you do? I am Bart Jackson, uh, CEO of Prometheus Publishing, and I have an announcement to make. Uh, publishing has been sort of keeping this under wraps for about the last 33 years, but Bennett Cerf is dead. The ancient, uh, I'm sorry, the fine founding father of Random House and the old style of editing has last passed from us and with that has gone the gilded, if not overly golden, age of author coddling. And, but in tribute to him, what I would like to do is describe Bennett's favorite cartoon. And it is called The Drama of the Book. That's just the caption. And here, standing here on this side, is this poor, tall, bedraggled dragon with spectacles down on his spout, scales dripping off, looking sort of forlorn, and holding a lance-like uh, implement that it says, ye blue pencil. And on the other side of the cartoon is standing <clears throat> in full armor, in, with sword rays, gleaming steel, ye author. And he is defending the damsel right behind it here, which is, Ye Precious Pearls, that's the manuscript. And that is represented by something that, that the, these two ladies here are far too young to remember. It's a, it, it's a typewriter with paper in it. And um, you, you can look it up when you get home. It was an old fashioned kind of mechanical word processor, but, but I think that is sort of the, represents of how, the old age of what they used to do for authors. They would take it in and lovingly fuss paragraph and phrase and counterpoint back and forth with the editors and the meeting of, with marketing and so forth. Well, times have changed. Last year, 391,000 books were published with ISBN numbers in America. And the most interesting thing about that was the indicator of change, 40% of those books were self-published, what we call self-published. They were selfies. And uh, that which, uh, in 2011, there was only 11%, I'm sorry, in 2007, there was only 11% of those were self-published. And that shows a great tend in the publishing world. And so the one question really does remain, with a vast volume of books, with the new change of more authors and less time for the publishers, what is it? that the mainstream publisher is offering, can offer, today's author. It's, it's a difficult choice, and I have uh, been fortunate enough to have uh, a very, very bright panel right here sitting with me. These people ha are such a pool of knowledge that uh, just sitting down beside them, I feel a little bit like a Christian scientist with appendicitis. And uh, the, over here, uh, we have Donya Dickerson, who is an executive editor from McGraw-Hill, and she uh, is, uh, she has done several recent books. The re her recent titles are, uh, forgive me for reading them, The Caterpillar Way, The Maker, the Maker Movement Manifesto, Super Teams, and The New York Times Bestseller. Great work. And uh, sitting, uh, the other lady sitting over here is Ellen Caden who is an executive uh, editor with Amacom, and she uh, has brought hundreds of titles to light, and along with author's insights to light. And she has, including that marvelous book, Ellen, what was the name of the first book you published, uh, that, that, I'm sorry, that you edited and brought it, brought it to fruition? Well, it was the Section 3, Divisions 1 and 11 of the nuclear section of the Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code at the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Oh, gosh. I keep, that, I keep my own copy right by the bedside. I, trust, I hope it will become a favorite of yours, too. It, it really should. And finally, we have Mark Morrow, who, has been, uh, who is a prolific author and a long veteran editor. And also, if you are one of those people who does, who writes a book as told to, if you're very lucky, Mark will be the one that you tell it to. So let's join here and let's find out 
what mainstream publishers are doing for authors. So, I thank you all for coming, and uh, I, th I know that there's, uh, this is something that we don't like, to, that isn't talked about very much, but really there is quite a, quite a gap here, and uh, first of all, do you believe that, that uh, the offerings of mainstream publishing have changed greatly? Would you, Alan? Changed as a result of what? Changed in, in what is off, offered an author now. What are the ways that uh, the mainstream publisher can, can help an author? Oh, well, I think publishing in general has changed. Okay. I don't know that what publishers offer has, well, Publishers can offer many more things than they did 15 years ago because technology has changed. Right. The whole industry has changed. All right. But uh, self-publishing has obviously changed the, the landscape as well. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I. Uh... Yeah, I mean to add to that, I think that any business is always evolving, and you know, now you can do apps for books, you can do enhanced eBooks. I mean, there's a lot that publishers are doing now, and a good publisher is, you know kind of on the edge of technology and on the edge of, you know, relationships and other ways to license books. Um, so there's tons that publishers are doing now that they weren't doing 15 years ago. Well, I am going to ask one question, and that is, uh, let's, let's, when, we, when we're looking at uh, the relationship between author and publisher, uh, there is one big intangible uh, aid that the mainstream publisher can offer. And that is the name and the power of the house itself. I, I know that, uh, I, I know there is a financial difference, obviously, between the 10% royalty and, and what you would get from self-publishing. But you know, my father always said, son, when you're looking for clients, always cultivate the people who care only about price. They're the easiest suckers in town. So there is quality to be gotten from the publisher. And tell me, what do you think, I mean, it means something to have my book published with McGraw-Hill, with Amicom, with Prometheus. Uh, could, give me a little bit, Mark, what, what, would be, what are some of the intangibles? What, what does that mean to, to an author, would you say, to have that? Um, well, I, I do both self-published and um, and, and books uh, and, and, and represent books to uh, publishers like uh, Amicom and, and McGraw Hill. I see. Um, and, and the authors I work with, um, I, if, if at all possible, I, I try to bring them to a mainstream publisher. Uh huh. Um, because there is a, um, a great benefit to them. Um, generally, the only reason we publish a book. Uh, in the space that I do, which is uh, business books and things like that, um, is it's a it, it's because oh there I am. Um, <laughs> uh, All right. It's because uh, you have a business um, opportunity in mind, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if you have a business opportunity in mind, um, then if you get your book published through McGraw Hill, Am Amicon. Uh, and, and then you add that to the, the workshop that you've attached to your book, um, it does add a lot more uh, cachet to, um, to your brand rather right. than, than I just uh, uh, self-published this thing. And, um, um, and, and often you get much better editing, of course, you know, I, uh, from, from these... Uh, um, publishers because they, they really do hire really fine editors to work with them. And, and I do think there's this idea to being curated, you know, I mean as an editor we get hundreds of proposals a year and, and the idea that we just select a few, it, it makes your book special and you know yeah. I also work with business authors and the feedback that I get is that, you know, because they have been published by a large global publisher, they're able to get a higher caliber of clients, they're able to get more yep. speaking engagements, they're able to charge more for their speaking uh, engagements. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of benefits, I think, for authors um, uh, kind of outside the scope of just having that distribution that a publisher offers. Mm. Quite yeah. true. Ellen at Amicom? Well, I think <clears throat> authors should keep in mind that less than a half of a percent of all offerings are going to be 
accepted by publishers. Yeah. Uh -huh. So automatically, there is a certain status to getting uh, an offer from a traditional publisher. I think a lot of the people that talk about the ills of traditional publishers are people who haven't been able to secure a contract with one, but yes. that's just my, my hunch. There are so many things that traditional publishers can offer from, you know, from cradle to grave of the book, the, the human relationship, the laying out the money, doing all of the professional things that you need to do that, that somebody would have to pay for, the expertise, the, you know, having a person there for support, having marketing team for support, even when the beginning of, the, when the, a book is no longer in its heyday of, of its first few months of marketing, you still have a team there that's behind you. Yeah, and in case you're absolutely. going to be someplace, they can ship books there, they can do things. There are so many things that publishers can do that authors that are considering self-publishing have no idea what they will be missing until they have done both and they realize what the difference is. I, I think uh, you bring up a good point, actually all do, is the idea of I really don't, uh, I really find very biased any club that won't accept me as a member and so since I've been turned down by a regular publisher, I, I find they really aren't very good. It was like a fox looking at grapes, I believe, that had a story like that. Uh, the other thing is, I'll just tell you an experience of my own, is that I, we, we had an author, uh, a fellow named Brian Shube, he's an exquisite importer, exporter, doing a book with us on winning at Glowing Global. He said, he called me and he said, you know, I was sitting talking with a fellow who was a potential client and I told him that I had to go and talk with my publisher. And he asked who it was, and uh, what was important was that this fellow had been, as you say, selected. The, the, the few, the proud, the uh-oh, made it author. And um, he, he said, right there, I could just see in his eyes my stock go up. So there is, some, there is something to it, and uh, there is also, and it's not that mark, because you are selected, it also means that you're going to, as Ellen and, and Tony have said, you're going to get more. And um, so, actually, along that line, um, what are some of the things, uh, you, you start to touch on it, Ellen, that um, I come in to self-publish my book, and of course there's all kinds of outfits that could make me pay for, for editing and proofreading and so forth and so on, but, uh, but really, um, when I come in, do you, do you have time? I mean, there's a myth that says, oh, you know, they only devote themselves to the top books and so forth uh, because they don't have time. If I am accepted by McGraw-Hill, Amicom, Prometheus, what am I going to, what kind of manuscript help am I going to get with? No? Well, from the, I would say that there is a difference uh, in the marketing of books, from the ones that are expected to have the most potential, they get some more resources. But in all other aspects, I would say every book is treated with great care, at least at Amazon. Okay, that's um, great. Good to hear. You come in. Uh, it, let's say you haven't done, you haven't completed your manuscript yet. So if you need advice about how something should go, you contact your editor. And in many in bigger publishers, you may not always be able to reach your editor. In smaller publishers, mm -hmm. you can. You get help with your development. If your manuscript is a complete mess, we may not just reject it, or we may reject it and say well, you, it needs help, and we may help you with the development work, right. and we may pay for that ourselves, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, then it goes to copy editing, and right. then there are professionals who, who know what they're doing. Then the, we interior designers who, who know how to make a book look good inside. And then we spend hours and hours on brainstorming meetings to title the book because packaging is so important. There are just countless things that publishers do that authors don't even see. I'm going to ask, so I'm going to ask the three of you a question. Since you were talking about titles, this is my favorite story of title story. Which, which great novel that I'm sure you all know was did the author initially want to title Malvolio of the Great Egg? Greg Gatsby? That's right. Okay. That's it. 
It was amazing. I, I told you why. I feel like a Christian scientist with appendicitis. I mean, it's My master's degree comes in handy. And, uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it, it, uh, that was his idea, and it, it, it stuck with him. But it, you know, it has the charm of an unchipped waiter, but it, it was something that he, he wasn't, uh, the other thing about that was he kept bringing in pages to his, he wanted to do revisions right as it was running off to the printer. And this is something that a mainstream publisher will put up with, as opposed to uh, smash words. Uh, go ahead. Uh, what what uh, kind of manuscript help would uh, uh, am I going to get? I mean, yeah. Help? To echo what what you're saying, I mean, you know, it goes through. Uh, I read through it. Um, you know, if it needs additional writing help, additional editorial help, we can send it out. We have a whole team of you know copy editors, proofreaders, paginators. Um, and, and I mean, I I think kind of going back to your last question, I think that you know. The, we keep our reputation as a good publisher by publishing well-written, strong, marketable books. Um, so it's uh, you know we're very invested in making sure that the books are good reads and that you know they're they're high caliber because we lose that reputation otherwise. So you know it's very important to us to have a very quality read. That's a good point. So. I am. Yeah. yeah, Mark. Or did, did, uh with manuscript help, what have you seen the mainstream publishers do? Um, well, um, I think you might agree with this, is that um, um, publishers uh, are expecting of a certain level of, of professionalism in, in the manuscripts they do get. Um, I don't think you really have time to uh, like rewrite the, the, no. the author's <laughs> uh, manuscript. And that's depends a, on the book. It depends on the book. <laughs> um, I, I, um, but that's what, a lot of what I do is is, right. is, is called development, and so I, mm. I I re I make a book a book. Right. That's what I do most of the time. Right. Uh -huh. And um, I, in fact, I just worked with Ellen on a pro pro uh -huh. uh, project uh -huh. with her publisher, and I, I helped the author um, develop the book, and it, it came in really in great shape. So they didn't have to do much with it, but then. You, you, you. Um, they paired the edit the writer with one of your editors, and he was so happy because the um, uh, your editor added a huge amount of value to what I did, and I had spent oh. you know a lot of time with it myself. Um, so it's 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 that final honing that, and then I saw the book. It just came out, and I and I said to the author, "This is really good. It's it's um, it's." It, it's Better than what I did. <laughs> yes. uh, but you didn't see what I started with, so. It's like the great line that uh, uh, George uh, Oscar Wilde was talking to some George Bernard Shaw, and, and George George Bernard Shaw said something very clever, and Oscar Wilde said, "I wish I'd said that." And Shaw looks at him and says, "You will, Oscar. You will." Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that uh, there is so much that the editors add and the, and uh, the proofreaders add. And I think I have I have just finished reading an utterly marvelous book that was very very uh, well very insightful, and it was self-published and filled with typos. And uh, and I it was it was a tragedy that this to, to see such an expert work marred. And uh, but on the positive side, as you say, it's it, Abraham Lincoln said, if I had. Uh, Nine hours to chop down a tree. I'd spend the first six sharpening my axe. You sharpen the book. You bring it forward, and that's that's what really counts. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Now I know also that there are new and other programs coming out for distribution and marketing that the mainstream authors are author offering their publishers right now. And I'd like I'd love to know uh, what McGraw Hill and Abacom will do, and I'll, I'll share a little bit what we're doing. So, so what? Uh, for for the mainstream author who is uh, who is a good candidate and has a, has a good blockbuster potential strong book, uh, what's he going to get? For well, I mean, I, I think one of the most important things that a publisher brings to the table is just their relationships. Um, so it's you know the relationships with the book buyers. You know, at, at McGraw Hill, we also work with a lot of specialty stores and special accounts. We have international. Uh, accounts that we work with and you know foreign publishers that we license translations to you know marketing and publicity they have their relationships so we can promote the books um, and so I, I think that that all leads to the distribution and the sales of the book and reaching the customer 
Um, and it's a lot of work. I mean, it's it's a whole team around each book. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, as a self-published author, it can just be a lot of work to try to get your name out there. And, you know, you can rely on a publisher who has those relationships in place already and, um, uh, you know, and, and knows how to do it. And they followed the trends and, um, you know, they know the technology, so. Ellen, what's going on in Amacom that uh, you're particularly proud of? Well, it's uh, very similar to what Daniel was talking about, the, an entire suite of activities going on. Uh, you, every author is automatically assigned a publicist. Oh. Every book will be sold internationally, and we have McGraw-Hill distributing us in mm -hmm. many places around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, foreign rights will be sold. Uh, now that's something that and, and very few individuals think right. of and, and do well, of course. It, the e-rights that, you know, books end up on dozens of databases, some of the, mm -hmm. some e-book accounts and some where people just access, and, and authors get royalties for these things. Yeah. You know, that you get your sub-rights, you can have audios made from your book or, or uh, excerpts or... Uh, you know, Soundview and other accounts where you can have your book, uh, Soundview promotes things around the world. And I frequently yeah. send my authors, you know, they say, your book is in the top 10 list of, of uh, get abstracts, uh, you know, in England, in uh, Germany or someplace. And it's, so you're getting money from sources internationally that you would mm. never get if you were self-published. That's, that's absolutely true. And we do something at Prometheus that we started. We have a, a Bart's Book Partners program, and we've been putting this up. Uh, what we do is we have set up a, a system that we figure the very best way that books get around is word of mouth. People pass it around. So we allow anyone who has a website or blog to put it up, uh, draw books from our catalog, put them up on their site, get them pushed out there, and they get a, the uh, the blog holder or website holder gets a percentage, the books go out that way. This is something that an individual author could not do himself. And uh, we, we also tweet and, and do our publicists do a lot of social media to promote yeah. our books. We also have, I forgot to mention, that we are a division of the American Management Association. And so oh, when we so because we specialize in business books, we uh -huh. have a whole other arm that can help promote our books through podcasts, webcasts. We can get sometimes courses made out of the books. Oh, so we have a lot great. of ways that we can help authors. I think we have a couple of minutes left. And um, I, what I'd like to, to ask now is sort of a tangent. What do you, you said, you select the few. You don't, uh, you turn away the chaff. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's sort of, yes, so it, it, it's a lot like, uh, graft in Congress, you know, only the top cream is allowed to get in. And so what I, I'm wondering, what are you looking for in the business guide that comes, or, or the book that comes over your transom, or, or is uh, carried in on the author's knees? And what do you, what do you say makes a good book that, that, that you like to look at? What, what are you looking for? Um, uh, well, you know, absolutely anything that's sort of a fresh approach for this shelf. There's, you know, a lot of business books out there, so it's it's what's new, it's what's exciting, you know, something that's um, kind of on the forefront of business thinking. Um, you know, I particularly am very interested in, you know, leadership and strategy and, you know, kind of higher level business books, sales books. Um, but, you know, in terms of what differentiates it from, you know, the other books that I pass on, it's, yeah, it's got to be a great idea and it's got to be something something that's new but that kind of builds on other books that have been successful so we know that there's a market for that yeah. book. Um, and then an author who has a strong platform and, and you know, they're recognized as an expert on the topic. So. Ellen, if I were following up with, with that idea, would I... Uh, would it behoove me as, as the prospective author coming up to uh, browse the business section beforehand before uh, and sculpt it before and sculpt my manuscript a little bit before bringing it to you or not? I'm not sure I understand what you're... What would you like to see in a business book? What are okay. you looking for? <laughs> um, uh, similar to what Danya was talking about, I think I want to see... We, we see 
because we specialize in business books, we see a lot of the same thing over and over. Sure, so sure. I'm looking for something that is different, more interesting, brings something new to a topic. And also, as you said, it's very important that authors have a, a, some kind of platform because we can only do so much within the first sure. however many months the book is available. And then what happens? The next season of books comes out. And I don't think authors realize that, that once you know a few months have gone by, another season of new books comes out and the publicists and the marketing team and everybody has to move on and concentrate their efforts on new books, which doesn't mean that your book is completely forgotten, but the emphasis is on the newest books. So authors have to have a platform before they ever even come to the publisher. A lot of people think if you have a website, all you have to do is have a website, and that's it. Well, what's going to drive people to your website? We, we provide authors with um, online marketing guidelines. It's 60 pages long. There's so much that you can do. Well, a lot of it is examples, of course, but there's a lot of work to do. I, I'm glad you said that. I'll, that's a quill pen moment. I th I'd like you to take your stylus, dip it in the inkwell, and remember that, that you have to have a platform, a reason, uh, and an existent way and method of promoting the book along in accompaniment with your publisher. So, and Mark, you have just done this. Uh, you have worked on a book. Tell us a little bit about the book you did with Roy and, and how his platform is going to help move it forward. Uh, yeah, well, well I, I just, um, I just uh, basically got, Ghost wrote this, uh, a book recently, a, a business book, and, um, and we did it all self-publishing, and it was fine. Um, and uh, it wasn't through uh, an iUniverse or any other kind of uh, company. Um, and it turned out really great. Uh, you know, it, it was perfect for him because this, this, um, this uh, author has a pretty large business, and it's, so did his business to, to self-publish it, right? Um, and and I, I also just finished a book with another author who was, he was a, a, the CEO of a, of a $3 billion company. Right. Um, and he was, he's a great guy, I really like him, and I helped him get his book published. We published it through iUniverse. Uh -huh. um, and it was a good experience for him, you know. Right. I, I basically developed the book, he, he brought <laughs> an absolutely perfect manuscript to them. And did, I, you know, excuse me, did you coddle him appropriately? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you coddle him appropriately? Yes, yeah. Oh, how kind of you. Right. But, but then I Universe um, did a nice job of, of you know, helping him, adding a little more value. And the book came out, and he's happy with it. But the reason that I, I couldn't sell it to uh, anybody else is because he didn't have really much of a platform. But right. that was fine with him, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he, he is building his own business. And wow. he's going to use the book that well, way. That, that in itself is something. I know a lot of marketing consultants who do that. I am getting a signal uh, from people that, uh, in the old words of Ed Sullivan, we're running a little late, folks, so good night. But before we take off entirely, I just want to thank everyone here for coming. And I really want to thank our panelists for enlightening us and showing us that Bennett Surf may be dead, but ladies and gentlemen, mainstream publishing is very very much alive, and I hope all authors will take advantage of it. I thank you.